Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. All right, today we're looking at an all new suitcase player, one I've never seen before. And I thought it'd be interesting to compare it side by side with a Crosley Cruiser. Cause a lot of people say Crosley Cruisers are all the same, all the suitcase players, it's all the same unit. Well, let's find out if that's really true. Welcome to Wreckitology! Okay, so here it is. This is the Vintage Suitcase Turntable Model R609 by a company called Retro Life, which up until recently I was unaware of. It says it's a three-speed, three-sizes vinyl record player. Play my music wirelessly, so I'll have to see what that's about. Built-in stereo speakers, aux input jack, RC8 line output, made in China. Now, no matter, we've tested and demoed and reviewed, not hundreds, but we've reviewed dozens of suitcase players and record players on this channel, and no matter what, no matter what tests and validations we run through it, if they test out fine, they're not too tracking too heavy, and they're not going to damage anything, doesn't matter what evidence is available, people will always say, these will damage your records. And I would caution you, people that are still open-minded, to look at the t look at the results. I mean, if it tracks too heavy, it tracks too heavy. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We're gonna judge each on a case by case basis, and you know, if it doesn't do damage, it doesn't do damage. If it does, then we'll call it out. All right. So we've got a uh, DC power supply, probably five volt. This is the owner's manual. And again, I do want to put it side by side with the cruiser. We've done this kind of thing before, but I think it's been a while. So we'll take a look at that again. I think the idea of these are great. It really gives you the opportunity to have a self-contained record player in a small package with everything, the speakers and you know, everything all in one. You don't need a stereo, you can take it places. And again, for the naysayers, this is, you know, portable record players have always been a part of vinyl records. It's just been the way it is. All right, let's take a closer look. I also get a kick out of people that are like, well, you never review good record players on your channel. You always review entry level stuff. Well, first of all, the channel was designed to focus on entry level. Number two, we have reviewed higher end stuff up to five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar turntable. So, oh boy. But anyway, welcome to those of you who are new subscribers. We had a healthy holiday season. Oops, or still are experiencing one, I should say, which is typical. Christmas Day is always our biggest day. We get the most subscribers. I think people are getting their record players and they're like, you know, trying to figure out what it's about. We've done videos on how to play your new record player, how to, how to, what to do next, how does it work, all that kind of stuff. And so people find us that way. And I think that's great. I think that's a wonderful thing. So cool. First impressions are, I love the look. It's sort of a very, it says it's black, but it almost looks like a dark brown to me. Yeah. Very cool. I love these like burnished sort of patinaed looking corners on here with the matching metal grills for the speakers. Very nice. We got the uh, feet on the bottom. I always, and they never put feet back here. I always think that there should be feet back there because, you know, it's a suitcase. It's just set like that. There's maybe been one or two suitcase players we reviewed that have had that. Most of the time it's just, you know, because it's designed to be played like this. So they put the feet on the bottom, but I think it'd be cool to also have feet like that. So, yeah. I mean, it looks good. It feels good. Retro life wire, a vintage turntable. There's the DC input. Aux input is missing. What is that? FM int. I am not sure what that is. So the aux in must be on the plinth. I'm not sure. There's the line output. Yeah, interesting. There's the hinge. I mean, the hardware feels solid. Looks good. I love the color combination. So on the box, it says it comes in pink, black, white, and blue. We obviously have the black, so it's cool. All right, big reveal. Let's look under the hood. Oops. All right, there we go. We got the Retro Life branding, sort of a felt lining, styrofoam, and it's our 45 adapter. And that just sits right back down there. For those of you that are not aware, for the records with the large holes, it's an adapter, so you can just put it right on there. All right, let's take a closer look at the plinth and then we'll test it out. Okay, so this part is called the plinth. That's sort of the base. 
So this is going to be a belt-driven three-speed turntable. This is a very common mechanism. We've seen it before. It's used on a lot of different companies' products. They're not identical, and it's not just one company making them all. Uh, this will be a ceramic cartridge. Now, ceramic refers to the cartridge material, like not material, the cartridge technology that's in the actual cartridge, not the needle. The needle is going to be either sapphire or diamond. Diamond and sapphire, you know, neither do damage, both sound the same, but a diamond will last longer because it's a harder substance. So you want a diamond one just because it'll last more like a thousand record plays before you need to replace it versus like a hundred for a, for a sapphire. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, nice. So this is good. So I'm going to zoom in here and you're going to see that metal bar sticking out the bottom. That is a cantilever, and the fact that it's a metal one is a good thing. Some of the ultra cheap ones have plastic, and that's not as ideal. The tip at the bottom, the shank there, is uh, kind of a reddish color, so I'm guessing this is sapphire. Again, no big deal. You can upgrade these super, super cheap. To take the stylus off, the stylus is mounted in that plastic, red plastic piece. Just stick your fingernail or a little screwdriver in, in the front there, and it'll, it'll hinge right off. We've done videos. On that I'm gonna skip over that so we can focus on the other stuff but good to see a rubber uh, boot at the back of the cantilever and a metal cantilever that's all very good stuff now back here is the spring-loaded or pre-weighted counterweight one of the two back there not too much play in there that's nice this is the lift shelf so when you unclip the tone arm I like how they put sort of this patinaed look on the tone arm to the metal tone arm to match kind of the aesthetic but when you lift when you lift the cueing lever like this it basically lifts up this little plastic shelf and that's what allows it to raise up and lower down and when you lower it down it's relying on gravity to to go all the way in and inside there is a little piston with some damping fluid so what happens sometimes is if you put it up and then flip it down see how it takes a while to go down and sometimes it doesn't go all the way down and that can cause the record to skip so if your record's skipping i always say just push down on this gently to make sure it's out of the way fully so that the needle is resting on the record all the way. And that is a good thing. Also, you'll notice this kind of movement here. That's normal, that's a shock mount. So this little shock mount effect is a good thing. It isolates vibrations from the speakers. So that's a, that's a good thing. All right, let's look at the controls a little bit closer. Okay, so there is our line input. So instead of putting it in the back, they just put it on top, that's fine. We've got a selector switch here for the line input, Bluetooth, or phono modes. Right here, there is an auto stop switch, so when the record gets to the end, it'll stop automatically. You can turn that on or off, and then the speed select, 33, 45, and 78. Yeah, simple stuff. And down here, we've got the on and off and volume button and the headphone jack. So let's run a couple of tests, and we can determine right away if it's a, a good unit or not. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is check the speed consistency. So in order to do that, we have to put this thing on. This is called a stroboscopic disc. Basically, it uses a light source and these, these hash marks on here to create a strobe effect to tell you if it's going too fast or too slow. So what you need to do is connect a light source that is on the same power supply or the same circuit as a record player. So I'm using this ring light because it works really, really well. And if you've never seen one of these before, you're like, what in the world are you doing? So. There are two sets of rings. There is this outer ring for 60 hertz power, and excuse me, for 50 hertz power. So this would be like the UK and places that run on 50 hertz power. Here in the United States, we run on 60 hertz, so we have the inner three rings. And there's three rings because there's three speeds on this turntable. So this one right here is going to be 33 RPM, the middle one 45, and that one 78 RPM. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'll show you what to look for next. Okay, so we're gonna be looking right here on this ring right here. This will be 33 RPM. I am turning on the record player and okay so as you can see those lines are marching a little bit to the left again that's an optical illusion that's they're really not moving that slowly it's spinning around very fast but with the light source and the refresh rate of the light source and everything that's what it looks like to the eye so this tool helps us to verify that the speed is accurate what you want are for those lines to be very still as you can see it's marching to the left, which means that it's a little fast, but that's not too fast. That's nothing that you're probably going to notice. That's sort of on the high end of acceptable, I would say. So what we're going to do now is flip it to 45, so it'll be the next ring here. Typically, these follow suit, so if one's fast, they're all fast, as you can see that one is as well. 
Now, when you drop the needle on the record, it will slow the record down a little bit, so it won't be quite as fast as it's showing here. And then finally, 78 RPM at the top there. And you can hear that motor noise. Pretty typical for 78 RPM. So it's actually a two-speed motor that they wire to do three speeds. And that's one of the reasons why you get that motor noise there. You can put oil on the drive shaft if you really wanted to get into it. But this is very typical. And so far, no huge red flags. Again, it is a little fast, but that's fairly common. Okay, let's test the tracking force of the cartridge itself. That's an important metric. So when people talk about record players damaging your records, although most of the time they're ill-informed and don't really know what they're talking about, what they are typically referring to is the fact that these track heavier. When I say these, I'm talking about ceramic cartridges. Typically when you see these red tips, although there are exceptions, there's a lot of fine magnetic cartridges, which is a higher end technology that you know track lower. But these ceramics like these, um, they output a line voltage, which is why manufacturers like to use them. They don't need any preamp circuitry in the unit, so it's cheaper for them to implement. And this type of a cartridge requires more downforce, more pressure. So five to six grams is pretty typical. It's not gonna damage your record. It will wear it out faster than a lighter tracking higher end turntable. But you know the difference between wear and damage is sort of a fine line, right? But I maintain that it does not you know, do any damage, but it will wear faster. How faster? If you listen to your record every single day, after a year or two, you'll probably you know, notice you know, more wear on it than you would have otherwise, but it's not a huge, huge deal. So many people love these units and they work just fine. All right, so we're looking for five to six grams. This is a five gram scale, so it's probably gonna peg out right away. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put our weight on the scale and reset it to zero. Then we're gonna take the weight off and it's gonna go to negative five. So now we're gonna add five to anything it says and then we'll get our tracking weight. Okay, so it is tracking at 6.38 grams. That is a little bit on the high side. I'd like to see that more closer to 5.3. So that is a bit high. Again, the, the range of which records can withstand needle pressure is very subjective and people have their opinions. Everything about records is so subjective, but typically it is understood and documented that records can withstand up to nine grams. Now that being said, that's a lot of downforce still to be putting on a record. And I personally probably wouldn't put my prized vinyl on this record player. However, for thrift store records, kids records, entry level, you know, stuff that I just don't care about that much, and I understand that it's gonna wear a little bit faster, I'd probably be okay with that. So really, when it comes to damage, what would really cause damage is if the jewel, either the diamond or the sapphire, isn't adhered and aligned properly. And that, without a microscope, is not something that we're gonna be able to determine today. So again, go easy. I would say start with a record that, you know, isn't, you know, a prized record, but something that, you know, you can kind of gauge it with. It should sound fine. It should be fine for most use cases. So let's go ahead and put a record on and give it a test. Okay, for music to test today, we're going to be using an awesome band known as Emil's Telegraphic Transmission Device. And they have sort of this pop synth 80s vibe and it's really cool stuff. So we're going to be using this record of theirs and we're gonna place it on just like that. And let's give it a listen. Now, when it comes to sound quality on these, you're not gonna be blown away. This isn't gonna be like some super hi-fi, oh my gosh, vinyl's the best sounding thing I've ever heard kind of a system. This isn't designed for that. This is designed for portability, for convenience, for people that are you know, testing the waters of vinyl and seeing if they're interested in going further, for kids, you know what I mean? This is for people that are just getting into it. It's a, it's a beginner unit. So the sound is gonna be, what you would expect. It's not gonna blow your mind. Even on you know the best suitcases, which this one so far, I don't really see any red flags, except for the tracking's a little heavy. Um, the good news is your records probably won't skip. But yeah, let's go ahead and give it a listen. The biggest thing with sound quality though is if it's impedance matched, and we don't really know that until we hear it. What we're gonna be listening for is thin, tinny sound or decently full and rich sound. I'm gonna switch to the front stereo mic so you guys can get a better representation of what it sounds like. Sounds very quiet. I have it cranked and it's just at a decent level. Let's try it. Is the big
biggest thing. So one way to test if it's an impedance issue that's giving us the kind of tinny sound is to do a line input test. So we're going to hook up uh, a device to the line input and give that a test. Before we do that though, I want to test my usual test record on this. Enoch Light One Note Samba. So that sounds fuller to me. Yeah, I mean the sound still isn't going to blow you away, but it sounds properly full. So I actually do think this is impedance matched properly. That's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, I guess just stick with my uh, preferred test record, at least to keep it consistent. So, we're gonna be using a Game Boy, actually a GB Boy color, color um, for sounds. Why not, make it interesting. So, I figure, even though I'm pretty sure this is impedance match properly, let's, this'll be fun. So, this does have Bluetooth, like we said before, but it's just a Bluetooth receiver. So, you're gonna hook up your speakers, or you're gonna hook up your phone to it, and it will act as a Bluetooth speaker. So, it's not that fun to demonstrate, it's just a Bluetooth speaker, so. All right, let's go ahead and flip on our device and test out the audio here. Yeah, it sounds good. Actually, I think it sounds really good. So yeah, not bad at all. Let's take one more look at it from the top down. Okay, so you know what? As far as suitcase players goes, it's fine. It's not gonna blow your mind, but it's gonna get the job done. It will wear your records out faster than a higher end record player, but not astronomically so. So that's my assessment of no major red flags. All right, I promised we were gonna do a side-by-side -side between the Retro Life suitcase player and a true Crosley Cruiser, which we have here on the right because everybody thinks these are all the same. So let's let's look at that right off the bat. So you can tell this, the uh, speakers are clearly different. The hardware here, you can see the hinge here is clearly different. The corner pieces are different. And this one is taller than this one. Uh, let's look at the width. The dimensions are pretty close there. Yeah, I think they are about the same width. Let's look at the back panels. See, the back panels are completely different. So the lesson here is that they are similar, but there are multiple companies in China making these. They're not all made by the same company. And most of the time, the brand that you see on the unit isn't the company that makes it. It's just a, that's just the way things work. And it's not just companies like Crosley and Retro Life, but it's Audio Technica, it's Sony, it's, you know, Lenco, all kinds of companies. That's just the way it works today. Most brand names, as we know them, are actually marketing entities that are licensed. So that's it, you guys. I think it's a decent unit. Okay, guys, at the end of the day, it's a decent unit. It's a, it's a, for suitcase players, it's a decent one. There's no major red flags. The tracking was a little bit higher than I'd like to see it. I don't like it to go over six grams. That was my biggest issue. But again, if you're using this for kids, if you're using this for thrift store records, for worn records, for a senior citizen, for somebody who's just dabbling in it, you know, I really wouldn't worry about it. If you're a collector of high-end vinyl, you know, precious historical things, then it may not be the best unit for that. However, if you collect 78s, this would be a fantastic unit because a 78, a shellac 78, can withstand significant tracking forces, sometimes up into the ounces territory. And we're down in grants. We're featherweight compared to that stuff. And you can upgrade the stylus so that you can play those kinds of records because an old 78 takes a wider groove than these micro groove modern records. So the sound will be a little thinner without upgrading that stylus. But if you put an upgraded stylus for a 78 on this, 
tracking force would be a benefit actually. It would actually make those sound really good. And a lot of people love these little players for that reason alone. All right, guys, I'm gonna put a link in the description below if you wanna snag one of these, but that's gonna do it for now. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.